Okay. Well, look around and see who's missing today. Uh, by the way, I would mention uh, Jan Bobbitt. I got word from her son Todd yesterday, and that's one reason you know they usually here on Sunday morning. But she's had this stroke. And uh, Brother Todd said that they have her, uh, they put her in Thursday in the Tremont Center. And I looked that up on the internet, and uh, they've got different places with that name. But I think it's the one over off of uh, Westheimer. It looked like on the map. I couldn't decipher that well. Uh, but there's two or three with that name. Be sure if you go visit them, or what have you, uh, call first. <laughs> May go the wrong place. All right, if you have your scriptures this morning, it is Thanksgiving time. Uh, <clears throat> the season of Thanksgiving was set up a long time ago. time that we should pause and give thanks. Scripture teaches us that we should have a thankful heart on a continual basis. Because folk, we got nothing that the Lord didn't provide. Nothing. Absolutely zero. He made us the recipient Many, many things, blessings in life. But I've entitled our message this morning, since it is Thanksgiving week, Thankful for What? The Bible does tell us in the last days that people, people would be unthankful. And I fear that we're living in that day where people do not really Stop and pause and realize that all good things come from Him. But in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, we've chosen to read our text. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble minded, support the weak. Be patient toward all men. See that none render evil for evil unto any man. But ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. Don't stop praying. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. And we'll pause a moment from our paper. It is a time that we've set aside, our country did years ago, in order to recognize that the Lord gives all things. Uh, Thanksgiving began uh, a long time ago. I won't give you all the history. You've heard it before. But it's the time that our nation had set aside to pause and thank the Lord for what we have. Before, think about it a moment. What do we have that God didn't provide? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Right. He is the author of life and the things surrounding life. And without him we wouldn't be, folks. But if you would look down at the middle of your page, Psalms 40, verse 5. 
The psalmist says, Many, O Lord my God, are thy wonderful works which thou hast done, and thy thoughts which are to usward. They cannot be reckoned up in order unto thee. And if I were to declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. But we can't count all that God's done for us. They're more than the hairs of our head. So we need to be thankful today for that which was and is a gift from God. And that includes all things. That which we could not earn, nor did we deserve. Amen. And I speak of life eternal. It's by far the greatest gift that one can possess. Not that we deserve it at all. But he gives it to us because he loved us. And it's free to all, isn't it? And for all. Life eternal cannot be bought nor earned. It is a gift from God. If you would, look at your paper uh, again down to where it says Titus 3 and 5. Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. For we didn't earn the right for salvation. Not anything we've done. But according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Now we all know these next two verses. Ephesians 2 verse 8 and 9. For by grace are ye saved through faith. That not of yourselves. It's a gift of God. Not of works lest any man should boast. Amen. How many people do you know today that still trying to earn salvation in their mind they're seeking to earn it doesn't happen that way does it folks salvation of the soul had a great cost the old rugged cross story never grows old because the price there the price was paid for your sins and mine So we need to be grateful for the most important thing is, is the life that God has given us and chosen us and made us part of the eternal ages that's to come. And I'm going to say another thing we need to be thankful for today. For the greatest country in the world Got it false. Our nation has got our ills. <clears throat> but why do you think that we notice in the news right now we got a caravan headed here from Honduras, South America? Because they've heard and they've envied what this country has to offer. And they're on their way. Several thousand, they tell me. And we ask ourselves, because we've seen the, the kind of the bad side too, why on earth would they want to come here? Because if you see what they got, you'd understand. Well, this is still, we've got our problems. It's still the best country in the world. They're busy in certain places, states right now, still recounting votes. 
So who got the most? The people's choice. We still get to choose. Don't know how much longer it's going to be that way. But we still live. In a democracy, don't we? <coughs> no other nation comparable to the nation in which we are part of. We're free to worship unmolested. Anybody tell us this morning that we had to come to church or we couldn't come or what we're going to have to preach and teach when we get here? The world's getting around to that, all right, but it hasn't got there yet. When I was in the high school, we had a program every morning before school called Morning Watch. We'd have different uh, pastors from around the area would come and they'd lead in. A, any of y'all have that in y'all's high school? We had Morning Watch. Before, church, before school took up every, every morning, now, we didn't do it every day of the week, but it happened during the week. That they'd allow a pastor to come in and bring a devotional. And we could, of our own volition, take part. Now, folk, I don't know if they allow that anymore or not. I don't think they do. We have a group that meets at school every Wednesday morning. Okay. Okay, but it's still a time of uh, devotion and prayer. Yeah. All right. But te people take for granted this will always be, but it won't always be, folks. We've got to read what the Lord says is coming down the pike. But what a blessing that we enjoy today that, that's passing thing. Now, Never underestimate what the Lord has provided for us in this great country. But the Lord said, in everything, give thanks. We need to give thanks for our health. We need to take care of the old body that God gave us because we live here. And do all we can to maintain it. Because it's a vessel of the Lord, isn't it? The Lord said we're not our own. We're bought with a price. But people usually take for granted their health until something goes wrong with it. And something will eventually. But thank the Lord that we can take care of what we got now that we might be recipients of a better thing later. <laughs> Most of us don't think of that, do we? Another thing we need to be thankful for today is for the lemons in life. Did you hear me? I said lemons in life. Boy, I like lemonade. That's Linda's nice, probably favorite drink when we go out to eat. We order lemonade. I grew up in Nacogdoches and for several years had a car dealership there in town that made a bad deal with someone. And this guy wanted to show this uh, car dealership They'd given him a raw deal, he said, so he put some bad advertisement for him. He put on top of the of his car a big board. It named the Pontiac place. It said, is a real lemon. That's bad advertisement for him. He finally <laughs> paid that guy to take that sign down. In a small town, everybody knows it. Nagaduchis was not that big yet. But it had on there, this Pontiac place was a real lemon. Well, folks, I'm here to tell you, you can make lemonade 
out of a lemon, can't you? <coughs> Fellow by the name of John Bunyan. Preacher. They preached the gospel over in England. And they locked him up for 12 years for preaching the gospel that men might be saved. It's just way back under years ago when they didn't have all this modern uh, sound equipment and whatever that we have. But they said that he stood inside the walls and people would gather up that couldn't see him, but they were on the other side of the wall. He would preach over the wall for 12 years. He was in prison at one time and then later on served a few more months. What people didn't know about John Bunyan was is he had a 10-year-old blind daughter that would travel to the prison, made friends of the people running it, and they would let her bring something to eat for her dad. But they said, John, excuse me, if you'll be quiet, if you'll be quiet and quit preaching, you can go home to your family. It didn't happen. He lost his little daughter shortly thereafter. He couldn't care for her because he gave his life to the ministry. The Apostle Paul was blinded, wasn't he? And then jailed that he might be a testimony for our Lord. We'll tell you about another fellow that was took a lemon, made lemonade. Some of us, few of us in here old enough to remember him when he lived. Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Born in 18 and 82. Grew up in New York. When he was a senator, 1921, age 39, he and his wife were on a vacation on an island. He developed a fever. He developed a fever. And was taken with this paralysis. He was paralyzed from his waist down. For the balance of his life. His mother encouraged him. Son, just resign from all activities, all politics and everything. Stay away from it. But Franklin Delano Roosevelt ran for the office of governor of New York and won that office twice, although he was paralyzed. Brother Martin, who uh, hadn't been able to visit with us in quite some times. He has up and brought us up here on the lake Franklin Delano Roosevelt's old bus that he used to campaign in. They would take that wheelchair and put it out on top of the bus when he was campaigning for office back under. Some of y'all seen that up there at the Martin's place. But he was paralyzed from the waist down when he ran for office of governor of New York. Two terms he served. And then he ran for the office of the president of the United States and was the only, the only president ever elected four terms. 
as a president of the United States. My daddy just loved Franklin Roosevelt because he said he started Social Security, helped us older people out. <laughs> he served 12 years but was elected four terms. Now we know that law has been changed where you just run two terms now. But he was elected four times. Crippled. He died in his late 50s with a cerebral hemorrhage. But here was a man that God used to rule over his nation. Even this United States of America. So he took the lemon and made some lemonade against all obstacles. And that was the Apostle Paul who was blinded when the Lord struck him down and then jailed throughout his ministry because he took a stand for the Lord. We could go on and on. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the three Hebrew children, and their testimony, they faced all obstacles, and yet they did it not fearing. But we need to be thankful this morning for a continual forgiveness. When you get out of service, and people do get out of service, we wonder sometimes where church people have gone. They've disappeared from our sight. They've quit serving the Lord. But God calls us back, doesn't he? People forsake the Lord, don't they? Demas, Paul said, love the present world. And quit the faith. We don't know that Demas ever returned back to the faith or not. We would hope that he did. But the Lord loved him anyway. And he would that he'd repent. Folk, the Lord is good to us, isn't he? You remember the disciples came to Jesus he said, Lord, how many times should we forgive this guy? Seven times? What did the Lord say? Seventy times seven. That's 490, isn't it? He meant endless. Folks, you can always get up one more time for the opportunity to serve him. If you would, look back at your paper, and I'm going to, this, this is the last reference I'm going to have to it, but up at the top of the page there, verse 16. It says, Rejoice evermore. Be thankful this morning that we can rejoice. We're in his hands, aren't we? We need to rejoice today because tomorrow is not promised. They say, and y'all heard this before, and I'm going to uh, give this to you here, remind you of it. Yesterday is history. Tomorrow, a mystery. Today is a gift. That's why they call it the present. Right? Okay, rejoice because of what he's going to do for us in the near future. Right now he's preparing a place for us, isn't he? Can you beat that? The creator, 
the master, the author of all things, is in the process of preparing a place for us. That's why he said, I go and prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, ye may be also. Folk, that's us. He included us. Amen. So during this time of Thanksgiving, let's give thanks where thanks is due. Folk, we wouldn't have anything if it wasn't for him. Anybody, any of y'all before you were born, get in line and say, Lord, I want to be born next. Any of y'all, any of y'all make a request, Lord, let me be born to certain, certain parents on a certain, certain day? Folk, it all happened because of him. He's the author of life. You can say what you want to about life, but he's the author of life. Moreover, he's the author of eternal life. That's where we're headed, folks. Okay, we're going to go ahead and close this morning. We'll stand together as we are dismissed.